All right, let's look at some more complicated examples using implicit differentiation. In front of us, we have a complicated equation with multiple instances of y. Importantly to note is that each of these terms that has a y in it, because of the chain rule, or just because of differentiation, every term that has a y will output a dy dx. This will get messy and a bit complicated looking, but the important part to remember is that all we're trying to do is to find dy dx or to isolate it by itself. We're gonna to have to use some algebraic tricks after our first step of actually differentiating. All right, so let's go through it. First term right here, y to the fifth. We know now what we're gonna do is do five y to the fourth, but then the chain rule has us multiply by the derivative of the inside function or this y, which is dy dx. Now to the second term, importantly here, this is the multiplication of two things that vary with it respect to x. So we're going to have to use a product rule and it will look like this. So we differentiate the first factor first. So x squared becomes two x to the one power times y to the third. We don't get any dy dx from that move because we didn't differentiate this factor, but here we go with the next step. So this is the first part of the product rule for this. Then what we're going to do is differentiate the y cubed. y cubed is three y squared times the derivative of the inner function here, which is dy dx. And we're gonna multiply that by x squared, not differentiate. Again, before we move forward, I just wanna make it clear is that when we differentiated this term right there, it gave us these two terms because of the product rule. And again, how that worked is the two x was the derivative of x squared. This x cubed was not differentiated. Then we differentiated the, the y cubed and got this dy dx out. This x squared right here is just the first factor. We move forward to the other side of the equation. The derivative of one is zero, that's pretty dang easy. Now I differentiate this, and now again, what I'm going to do is use the product rule for this. So I'm first gonna differentiate y, and when I differentiate y, well, I just get dy dx times the second factor, e to the x squared. And the second part of the product rule for this term, again, is now to differentiate this, when I differentiate this, I get e to the x squared times 2x, which is the derivative of this inner function, um, then times y. Again, to emphasize that this one term right here results in these two terms because of the product rule. So as stated originally, what my job is, is to find out what dy dx is. The issue is right now is that I have three different terms with dy dx in it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this term over here or subtract both sides by this term. And I'm gonna move this term over here. And what that's going to do is put all my terms with a dy dx on one side and you should see real quick why I'm doing that. So the only difference between what you see now and what you're gonna see in a second is this will be over here and this term will be over here. Obviously, they'll have a negative in front of them because I'm subtracting them from both sides. All right, so there I've done it. I've swapped those two terms. Again, my job was to get all of the terms that have a dy dx on one side. You'll notice I cleaned things up a little bit. Like for instance, um, this term right here is simply this term. I just put the two x y out in front of this e x squared part. Now what I'm going to do, and this is the main algebraic trick, is I'm going to factor out this factor of dy dx from these terms right here. And so again, this is just a factor of each of these terms. When I factor that out, what I get is dy dx times 5y to the fourth plus 3x squared y squared minus e x squared. And this side will stay exactly the same. And then my final step that I need to do to get dy dx by itself now is simply divide both sides by this expression. 
So this right here would be result of taking this expression right here, dy dx times this jazz equals this. Dividing everything by this expression, when I divide by that, it cancels this out, and this side gets divided by it, leaving me with this result right here. 